Eh, una feliz y una elefante. Si les gusta lo que están diciendo los candidatos, les invitamos a mostrar su carita feliz. Y si no les gusta lo que dicen los candidatos, pueden mostrar su carita enojada. ¿Ya están listos para empezar? Sí. sí. en 
los estudios en la vida. Eso significa tener un hogar. Sí, perdón. Ahora voy a estar interpretando, que le voy a dar un, un resumen, ya que fue bastante información, pero aquí tenemos a la candidata Jessie Fuentes, en la cual viene siendo la can, candidata del 26 distrito, eh, lo cual dice que más que nada les, eh, se disculpa porque eh, no está aquí eh, la otra candidata, eh, de, obviamente, del distrito, pero con eso está muy contenta de que los que ya creen que obviamente todos deberían tener la oportunidad de escuchar de todos los Ahora ya que ella eh, incluso eh, estuvo dando un poquito de su eh, historial, eh, lo cual dice que ella es una hija de donde viene la familia, donde hay adicción de drogas y donde tienen padres encarcelados. Y ella está, eh, va a hacer todo lo posible, ella nació, eh, nació y murió en un grupo park. Entonces ella sabe obviamente las necesidades de la comunidad, sabe cuál es el epitomio eh, de la educación, ya que lleva 10 años eh, también en la educación sabe cuáles son los derechos que deberían todas las comunidades tener. Llevan siete años en, el, en, el, en la agenda de la comunidad de Puerto Rico dirigiendo y lo cual es como creen que ella es importante en una buena educación, eh, lo cual eh, ella está dispuesta a, a darlo todo, ya que incluso ella también tiene un poco de historia de la justicia, es profesional de la justicia, entonces... Eh, um, Perdón, pero obviamente es de hecho un privilegio, no es un privilegio, sino la vivienda es un derecho que todas las familias deben de tener para poder hacer este, las viviendas eh, no tan caras, no tan costosas y que todos tengan el derecho de poder tener un hogar. Un hogar. Eh, ella obviamente estaría muy, eh, ella estaría representando la candidata para los distritos que es Washington, Bowman Creek. Um, Park, Hermosa, el Logan Square. So, esas son todas las comunidades que pertenecen por parte del de, 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 de 26 distrito y lo cual obviamente ya estaría muy feliz de contar con ustedes en 18 días, es que ustedes puedan obviamente poder votar por ella, porque ya saben, con fe y con todo, las propuestas y ganas que tiene, eh, ya será su siguiente concejal. Ahora continuamos con el tema de la vivienda. Todos merecen la oportunidad de salir adelante en sus estudios en la vida. Esto significa tener un hogar. Pero la gentrificación es una amenaza para las personas de color. Y desplazamiento, el desplazamiento crea nuevos ciclos de trauma generacionales. Todo el beneficio de los bancos desarrolladores e inversionistas. La gentrificación es causada por demoliciones que derivan viviendas asequibles y zonas que aumentan los impuestos a la propiedad. Hay personas muy ruidosas y racistas que se oponen a la vivienda asequible y apoyan la gentrificación. La pregunta es, ¿cómo se compromete a avanzar la vivienda asequible, por ejemplo, en el encuentro Square? y apoyar fuerzas como las fianzas de demoliciones ante la oposición? Now, I think it's a with the question of housing. Uh, everyone deserves the opportunity to succeed in school and in life. That, that being happened. But gentrification is a threat to people of color, creating great new cycles of generational trauma. All over the property banks, developers, and investors. Generation, gentrification, fiscal demolition, the tear down on total housing, and also to the increased property taxes. There, there are very loud and racist people who oppose affordable housing and support gentrification. How are you committed to advise affordable housing like Equestria Square and Pioneer Bank and supporting policy like the demolition impacts of church in the face of opposition? Absolutely, that's a phenomenal question. As co-chair of the Puerto Rican Agenda, I put a housing summit together four years ago, in which the plan to bring affordable housing to the 26th Ward included organizations like Lucha, Bigger Guy, and Hispanic Housing, to ensure that we can bring hundreds 
of affordable housing units to the 26th floor. Under the Pioneer Bank and the a wonderful project, that won't happen in this term. It will happen after the new older person is elected and I am committed to ensuring that we put shovels in the ground on both of those projects. <laughs> but also, we have to look at the housing issue and gentrification like a table with four legs. Yes, we need to make sure that we are bringing more affordable housing units into the 26th Ward so that we can continue to house our working families. But we also have homeowners who are selling their homes. I've been knocking in the 26th Ward for the last five months and I have counted over two dozen families who have put for sale signs on their homes because they cannot afford the property tax increases that have come down by the Cook County Assessor's Office. I am going to make sure that we provide tax relief to every homeowner in the 26th Ward, and that requires making sure that we are working with individuals across governmental sectors. And so I will hold state representatives accountable and folks at the county. But also we have seen the homeless population in our community grow. Those tank encampments are big. And our homeless population cannot afford those affordable housing units. And so we have to have real conversations about public housing and ensuring, once again, that housing in the city of Chicago is a right and not a privilege because everyone deserves a roof over their head. And that is what you want to get in me as your next 26 more dollars. See, ahora, Chicago 
it must end. And in 26 Ward, we are going to ensure, and I just want to say this, I've been walking the most western precincts that we picked up in the 26 Ward, right? So far as the Belmont Freddy and Hermosa. And it is extremely disheartening to see that that community has not received the basic necessities that they deserve. The paving of their roads, street lights, the paving of their alleys, ensuring that they can have water pipes that are not filled with lead. But that community hasn't been paid attention to because our immigrant brothers and sisters live there. That would not happen under my watch. But more importantly, we gotta make sure that we are growing a workforce in the 26th war that is going to treat our immigrant brothers and sisters with dignity and respect. That means livable wages. That means ensuring that we can maintain affordable rent costs across the war so that all of our working families, despite citizenship, can afford and thrive in the 26th war. We are also going to make sure that we are providing culturally competent lending programs so that we can get our immigrant families to open businesses in our communities because they are capable, they have the ideas, and I am going to make sure that we assist them in becoming brick and mortar businesses across the 26th world. I also, I also want to say, Congresswoman Debbie Adamides is a really good friend of mine, and I promise you we will not stop at the federal level, at the state level, at the county level, or at the city level, until every immigrant family gets the rights that they deserve, and that is including aid here in the city of Chicago. Uh, Y el desplazamiento continúa haciendo daño a nuestros estudiantes y a nuestra comunidad. 
Si usted es elegido, ¿qué está dispuesto a hacer para responsabilizar a CIPIE para brindar prácticas restaurativas efectivas, apoyos socioemocionales uh, y programas uh, comunitarios que aseguren el bienestar de nuestros estudiantes y de nuestra comunidad y nos ayuden a ellos y a nosotros a sanar y crecer? Gracias. Thank you for the question. So I spent 10 years in education, six of them at a CPS school. Six of those years at Loreto Clemente Community Academy as the Dean of Student Affairs. I can't tell you how many young people we lost to gun violence and how many families we had to console that were not prepared to lose their children. Many of them during the school day when they should have been in school, but because of the zero tolerance policies that many of our schools practice, those, schools, those students are home on suspension. I'm a restorative justice practitioner. I believe in engaging young people in a process of healing so that they learn and become agents of change in their community. But unfortunately, we have many schools across the district that have become a school to prison pipeline for many young and black and brown young people in our community. That is not something I am going to stand for. I am going to ensure that we are rallying, mobilizing, and applying pressure to the administration of CPS to do away with the zero tolerance policies across every school in the district. Because our young people deserve mental health services. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that every school is fully funded. Counselors should not have a caseload of young people that are 300 students large. We should not have part-time social workers in our schools with a student population of eight to 900. We should have mental health specialists that can ensure that our young people are getting the mental health services that they deserve. And more importantly, I'm going to make sure that if I become the next 26 board all the person, that I'm going to reopen a public mental health clinic that was closed down in our community under the Obama administration. That we would have a 24 hour crisis center in our community so that we have professionals responding to mental health crisis in our community and not the police. We are going to make sure that our community is engaging in a process of healing because every family deserves that. Thank you. 
gracias a nuestra candidata por su participación. Pero 
solamente el 38 del poder del voto. Pasamos del 10% de votantes Trump a 20%. Necesitamos elegir a alguien que entiende cómo la gentrificación destroza a las comunidades. En mis años como organizadora, ayudé a asegurar que millones en fondos estatales y municipales llegaran a nuestros distritos para abordar la estabilidad juvenil y reducción de, de la violencia. E hice programas de, después de la escuela y iniciativas de empleo para jóvenes. Donde hubo falta de servicios de constituyentes, mi personal y yo nos levantamos y nos dijimos presentes. Necesitamos experiencia. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Warren Williams, and uh, I'm running for alderman of the 38th Ward because I've been in this ward for a long time. And I've seen a lot of things change. And the one thing I've seen that's the same is that our community is not being listened to by people in power. And that is not acceptable because I know it's like not to be heard, not to be listened to. When I was 19 years old, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. And I was even though I was working a full time job. Uh, I was uninsured, and that means I had to go down to Cook County once a month to pick up the life saving medication that I needed. While sitting there, I saw other people like myself who were not being listened to. Too. And with that, my union parents taught me when you see something that's wrong, you don't sit around and you don't complain, you organize. And that's exactly what I did. That's why I started 38th United, which is a nonprofit that was made to listen to the members of the 38th Ward. And through that, what we saw and what we did was we saw that like, our streets needed to be clean. So while our element was twiddling its thumbs, we were rolling up our sleeves and getting to work. When we saw that people were getting kicked out of their houses, we got our communities together and we petitioned and stood up against the alderman to make sure that poor black and brown people were not getting kicked out of their homes. And um, when we saw that this uh, uh, pandemic was going through, uh, was killing people, uh, we we made over 500 phone calls to seniors during COVID just to do wellness checks, see if they need drugs, see if they need the life medication, saving medication that they needed. And as a woman, that's what I will continue. I will continue these fights. I will make sure that we reopen our mental health facilities. I will make sure that we have fully funded after school and summer job programs. I will uh, make sure that we have universal public transportation. I will make sure we have protected pipelines. And it's because of all these things, I am the most endorsed candidate. Because like this is not just about me. This is about us and this is about our community. Thank you so much.
was born and raised here in Chicago. I'm the proud son of Colombian immigrants, a proud CPS graduate and parent, and I currently serve as the Director of Diversity Programs at the CTA. So for the last eight years, I've been helping connect small minority and women-owned businesses to hundreds of millions of dollars in contracting uh, at the CTA. And I want to use my expertise in government, small business development, and coalition building to bring you transparent and responsive representation. I'm the only candidate in the 30th Ward with the experience of municipal government that is not tied to the old political machine, and we need a change in leadership. We need to focus on our communities. I will be a voice for you all to make sure that we rebuild trust with our elected officials, that we rebuild trust with our government. I want to have a community with me every step of the way, and that's what transparent and responsive representation means. It means having participatory budgeting. It means having a zoning committee so that you all get to weigh in when zoning requests are put in. I want to have a small business committee to make sure that we engage the small businesses that are here in our community and that we grow them and that we welcome new ones into our community. I also want to have a youth committee so that we're engaging youth and asking them where, uh, what, what they need and how we can deliver that. Thank you so much for your time. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Juan Pablo Prieto y me postulo para concejal del Distrito 30. Yo nací y me crié, me crié aquí en Chicago. Mis padres son inmigrantes colombianos. Soy ex alumno de las escuelas públicas de Chicago y mi hijo es alumno de CPS. Soy el director de Diversity Program en el sistema de tránsito donde en los últimos ocho años he conectado empresas pequeñas uh, con contratos en la CTA. Yo quiero usar mi experiencia en el gobierno municipal, el desarrollo de empresas pequeñas y la formación de alianzas para traerle a ustedes representación que es transparente y responsable. Soy el único candidato en el Distrito 30 con la experiencia municipal y que no está relacionada con la vieja guardia política de Chicago. Necesitamos una nueva clase de liderazgo que se enfoca en la comunidad. Seré una voz para el esfuerzo de restablecer la confianza en nuestros funcionarios electos, en nuestro gobierno, y yo quiero tener la comunidad conmigo. Hablando de comunidad, el nombre parece es muy especial para mí. Yo bailé en un grupo tierra colombiana en la secundaria de la universidad. Y aprendí que los palenques, qué eran los palenques, y cómo los afrocolombianos tomaron sus vidas en sus manos, en sus propias manos, y crearon sus comunidades. Y así quiero tener la comunidad conmigo, y asegurar que ustedes estén haciendo las decisiones conmigo. Por esto participo en varias juntas, la Junta de la Casa Norte, Spanish Coalition for Housing, y Latino Worker Safety Center. Muchas gracias por su tiempo.
Hay personas muy ruidosas y racistas que se oponen a la vivienda asequible y apoyan la gentrificación. La pregunta es, ¿cómo se compromete a avanzar la vivienda asequible en el triángulo Belmont en cara de oponentes ruidosos y racistas? Now, we begin with the first of three questions. This one is one the topic of housing. We have three minutes to respond, one and a half minutes to respond in English, and one and a half in Spanish. Everyone deserves the opportunity to succeed in school and in life, and that means having a home. For gentrification, is in threat to people of color. This blatant radio cycle of generational trauma, all for the profit of banks, developers, and investors. Gentrification is caused by demolition, the teardown, affordable housing, and awesome the increased property taxes. There are very loud and racist people who oppose affordable housing and support gentrification. How can you commit to advise affordable housing in Belmont Triangle in the face of racist opposition? I think first and foremost, to have you there with me to give you a seat at the table, to help you raise your voices. I want to make sure that there's someone from LSNA on our zoning, on our community zoning board. I want to make sure that every community-based organization is seated at that table with me. How are we gonna, what are we gonna do with Belmont Triangle? I want all of you who showed up this morning, who are here, to show up there. Because you know what really scares a developer? A lot of people. Right? A lot of noise. That's what's going to scare a developer. Right? I want to make sure that any developer that comes into the 30th floor, that we are at the forefront together telling them what they can do and not telling us what we can do. Woo! Right? We want to make sure that uh, at the Belmont Triangle, that it's going to be a center of resources for our community and that we're going to implement affordable housing. Right? But not only that, we need to re educate our own community members. Right? Yes. I hear it too many times at the door. No, yo no quiero eso. Eso es Section 8. Eso es Section 8. Eso no es la verdad. That's not the truth. The truth is, is that even within our own Latino community, we have had leaders that have failed us yes. and that have lied just so that they can keep their positions in office. Enough. Enough. I think what we have to do is stand up as a community and work at this together and make sure that we're electing people that, that are going to push us forward. Vamos a necesitar un concilio de zonificación comunitaria. La primera cosa que yo quiero hacer es tener a LSNI conmigo en el Vamos a Traer. ¿Tú sabes lo que va a asustar a un developer? Ustedes. Yo quiero que cada uno de ustedes venga conmigo y cada vez que, que, que vienen a nuestra comunidad a hacer demandas, que nosotros decimos que no. Y que y tenemos que organizar como una comunidad. Yo he tocado muchas puertas y, y muchos latinos, hasta latinos me han dicho, ah, pero... Eso, eso de la vivienda de, de costo moderado, no, no, eso, eso no sirve, right? Eso es porque hemos tenido liderazgo que nos han fallado. Tenemos, tenemos que, que estar ahí como una comunidad um, y, y um, asegurar que tenemos un plan y un concilio right, de zonificación. Yo quiero que cada organización comunitaria que tienen un asiento en la mesa conmigo y yo voy a hacer mi voz y yo voy a tener un voz feroz para nuestra comunidad. Uh, thank you. That was a, that's a really good question. And um, I've lived in this work for seven years and I've had to move four different times because I keep getting rent uh, out or price out, price out of rent. Every single year, I am scared that, like, when my niece is up, I'm going to have to leave the community that I love. And I know this is a problem for everyone in this community because, like, uh, most people, I do not come from generations at all. I cannot rely on my family to pay my rent and my bills. And I, I agree with, uh, with Jessica that, like, what scares developers are people in numbers. That is why last summer, 
I worked with 38 United and Pinnacle and Gale SMA. We got 50 people together and we did a demonstration in front of the alderman to demand that when Belmont Triangle was built, it had 100% affordable housing because I wanted the 38 Ward to have the most affordable housing in the city. And the developer was so scared that they stopped uh, all, like, uh, they stopped building on that. That is the power of people. And that is why I support uh, things like a first time homeowner grant because we need to make sure that people are able to afford a down payment on their homes. We need to make sure that there are people living in these houses and not developers. That is why I support Great Chicago Home. That is why I support uh, Tip for Fun to make sure uh, our property taxes are not going toward private developers, they are going toward the people. And that is why I support participatory budgeting and participatory zoning because everyone deserves to have a voice in what we are doing, especially uh, our undocumented residents and people under 16. Thank you. Chicago, we need to make sure that the community is with us every step of the way. 
so that we do not displace current residents. We need to increase the inventory of housing in the 30th floor to make sure it's one way of stabilizing housing prices. And that way, we put the power of the market back into the hands of renters and home buyers and, not, and then prevent any greedy landlords from overcharging on rent and from raising rent. I have a history, a proven track record, a public track record at CTA of holding contractors accountable for the goals, the aggressive goals that we set in our projects. And I will do the same thing with developers in the 30th floor. We're going to sit down with them and we're going to develop the goals and tell them what they're going to do in the 30th floor. We're going to make sure that every project has goals around affordable housing and green space and other community benefits. And for larger developments, we're going to make sure that there's community space so that we can gather as a community. Again, I am committed to having a, uh, a zoning committee made up of residents to make sure that you're with me every step of the way and to make sure that we're creating community, uh, that we're creating uh, wealth in our communities. And I am, I am committed to making sure that the Donald Triangle Project has 100% of work.
¿Quién conoce a nuestros hijos mejor que ustedes? Ustedes saben lo que, lo que es lo más necesario. Si yo quiero trabajar con mi comunidad, con todas las organizaciones, comunitarios, porque ellos sí van a tener una posición en mi oficina. Ellos sí van a tener un voz right? en cada decisión que nosotros tomamos.
and we need to be there to hear from you about what you need. That's why I want to have the community with me every step of the way. I want to make sure that we have participatory budgets so that the menu money that comes to each ward, the projects are decided by you because it's your money. You should decide what goes into that. And there is no residency status that needs to go to participatory budgeting. That's for you, the taxpayer, to decide what happens with that. I want to make sure that every city service is available to all residents, regardless of status, and that we're doing everything we can to create generational wealth within our communities and make sure that everyone in our community has access. Yo apoyo la ciudad de Chicago sea una ciudad sanctuaria y que programamos los recursos para los inmigrantes que lleguen a buscar una vida mejor. Como funcionario público es importante que nuestra ciudad sea un sitio seguro y uh, que le dé la bienvenida a los inmigrantes. Esta ciudad le dio muchas oportunidades a mis padres y quiero asegurar que continuamos las políticas con compasión, que escuchemos a la comunidad, eh, el concejal es la forma más local de, del gobierno y nosotros tenemos que saber qué son sus necesidades y responder a eso y asegurar que estamos proveyendo todos los servicios públicos, todos los servicios municipales a todos los residentes. Por eso yo quiero tener los pres presupuestos participativos para que el dinero que llegue al distrito ¿Qué hacemos con ese dinero? Se decide por ustedes, por los residentes, y no hay ningún Estado que, que, que tiene que tener para votar en eso, para que ustedes decidan qué vamos a hacer con su dinero. Tenemos que asegurar que todos los servicios municipales sean accesibles para todos los residentes y asegurar que estamos respondiendo a sus necesidades. Gracias. Lo que no, no, no tenemos tiempo, 
y no tenemos espacio los candidatos que han tomado contratos de ICE y de Secure Communities um, en, este, en esta elección, en, en, en estas campañas. Uh, ustedes saben lo que pasó con ICE y con Secure Communities. Destruyó a nuestras comunidades y separó a nuestras familias. Y no hay tiempo para eso ahora. Si vamos a hacer una, un, un ciudad de bienvenida, pues no hay ningún electo oficial ahora que llenan documentos de inmigración en sus oficinas. Dicen que es demasiado responsabilidad y tenemos que cambiar eso. Yo quiero tener una clínica de inmigración en mi oficina para que cuando ustedes tienen problemas pueden venir a mi oficina y yo puedo llenar esos documentos. Yo he llenado a cientos de, de, uh, de documentos de inmigración y ahora tenemos nuevos ciudadanos y eso es lo que tenemos que hacer en nuestras comunidades no tenemos tiempo para electos oficiales que tienen miedo yo no tengo miedo yo voy a estar ahí con ustedes y vamos a luchar juntos
Yo quiero asegurar que todos los estudiantes, sin importar de qué vecindario vivan, reciban una educación en primera clase. Siempre he apoyado a la, a la educación pública, formé por la asociación de alumnos, de ex alumnos de la nuestra Cala Prep, serví dos términos en el de la nuestra Cala Prep y ayudé a un grupo de padres y vecinos a abogar para un patio de juegos en la elemental SEM. Seguiré apoyando a las maestras, al personal y a los directores para que tengan los recursos necesarios para preparar la próxima generación de líderes. Yo abogaré el liderazgo de CPS para los fondos que cada escuela pública tenga una biblioteca, una enfermera y un, y un trabajador social en cada escuela, porque tenemos que proveer esos recursos para los estudiantes. La buena noticia es que les vamos a tener un consejo escolar y yo voy a apoyar a candidatos que representan a la comunidad y las, las, las intereses de la comunidad. Yo tengo la, la experiencia de formar esas alianzas. También quiero responder a algo que dijo a la, la señora Gutiérrez. Hace casi 10 años yo trabajé en Homeland Security y tengo amigos de ahí y ellos me han apoyado. Pero por los últimos 8 años yo he hecho mucho trabajo para, traba, para trabajar para la comunidad latina y apoyar a la comunidad. So the graduate uh, of CPS and now a parent uh, of, CPS, of a CPS student, I want to make sure that all students, no matter what neighborhood you're from, no matter what school you go to, receive a world-class education because we are a world-class city. I've supported public education uh, for a long time. I helped put together the uh, Alumni Association for Northside College Prep. I served two terms on the LLC at Northside. Um, and I recently helped uh, a group of parents and uh, community members get a uh, playground installed at Salmon Elementary that hasn't been there for over a decade. And I want to make sure that we continue to support our teachers, staff, and principals at schools to make sure that kids have the resources they need to learn. Every CPS school should have a nurse, a librarian, and a social worker so that we get these kids to the resources they need. The good news is you're going to have an elected school board here in Chicago, and I will support candidates that represent the community's interests. Now, to respond to Ms. Gutierrez's claim, almost 10 years ago, I did work at Homeland Security, and I have some friends from there, and they're supporting me in this. But in the last eight years, I have spent my career and my free time supporting my community, the Latino community, and making sure that we create generational wealth not just making sure we're at the status quo, where we are now, but make sure we look to the future and how we can build on what we have and create that. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias a los padres y lectores. Ustedes son poderosos y maravillosos. Gracias a